Hey friends, are you looking for an efficient way to create tokens for your virtual tabletop games? Well, today I'm going to cover a brand new release of an app called Token Tool from RP Tools. Uh, this is an app that I've been using for a number of years. I'm a really big fan and a new release has just dropped that has some interesting features uh, that I'd like to show you today. So let's make haste. Here we go. All right, I'm Brian Church. This is the Jacoby Plays channel where I talk about things related to tabletop role-playing games. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the latest version of an app called Token Tool. They have just released a brand new version, version 2.2, and it has some features that, uh, that will really help speed up the creation of tokens for your virtual tabletop games. I've been using this for a number of years, and uh, as I said, this is, for my workflow anyway, has been the most efficient tool that I have found. So let's dive into it and have a look. All right, here we are on my desktop. And I have the page for rptools.net called up, and you can see here is their announcement of the 2.2 release of their app, token tool. So on this page, you'll find a little bit of information about some of the newest features that they've included in this release, as well as a link to download the application from their GitHub uh, repository. I've already installed this. We're going to open it up. We're going to have a look at the interface. So here is token tool, a uh, pretty simple interface. Uh, you can see that uh, we just have a single red ring on a white background. In the top right hand corner over here, this is what the token will look like when I export it from the tool. Now, uh, unless I just need a white token in a red frame, this could be perfectly fine. But let me show you how I have used the tool in the past. We're going to head over back to my browser and we're going to go to paizo.com. I play a lot of Pathfinder, so I'm just going to snag an image from the Pathfinder blog. Uh, I'm going to copy this image of a hobgoblin. We'll hop back over to Token Tool, click on my screen, and hit paste. And look at there. My hobgoblin has imported. Now, obviously, in this token view over here, you can see that my hobgoblin is much too large to fit in the frame. So I'll use my mouse wheel to scroll out and then reposition my hobgoblin so he's within the frame of my token. There we go. So from here, I could output this token and I would have a nice little hobgoblin token. But something else that we can do here in the overlays menu I can go down and I can change the appearance of the frame. So if I wanted to have a square frame instead of a round frame, I could put something like this around my hobgoblin. I could add a sort of wooden photo frame uh, to him. Some of these have a non-transparent image area. And in that case, I would click this send to back toggle here so that the frame sort of drops down below my hobgoblin. I'm not super, super interested in a lot of these uh, square tokens. That's not, uh, not generally what I use for my games. I tend to use the smooth round tokens I find uh, suit me best for, uh, for, for my purposes. So I'm going to select a red circular smooth frame. That's what I use for enemy combatants within my game. For NPCs, I'll either use the blue frame or sometimes this kind of beige color frame. And then for heroes, I like to use uh, a golden frame of some sort, uh, just so that they stand out as different uh, factions within my game. If you have a bunch of different teams that your player characters might align with, you know, maybe you could use some different decorative tokens to kind of represent, oh, this is from Team X, you know, whatever, whatever the, uh, the characters might be from. All right, so now I have my hobgoblin in a red frame. I could export this and go straight to my virtual tabletop game, import the token, and I have my hobgoblin. But we're going to spice it up one more level. We're going to head back over to our browser. We're going to go to a site called Unsplash, and I've done a search for forest images, and I kind of like this forest image by Michael Cron. So Unsplash is a free site where you can get uh, high-resolution images. I use it often for desktop patterns and things like that. I'm going to copy this image 
head back over to Token Tool. And here you can see I'm on the portrait layer. That's where I have posted my, or pasted my hobgoblin image. I'm gonna switch this to background. And now I'm going to paste my forest image, scroll out a bit. And now it looks like my hobgoblin is in a forest setting. So I can export this, gives, gives my image a little bit more flavor so that it's not just a, a character portrait on a white background. Uh, so if you like that, then that's uh, sort of a fun way to differentiate some of your images um, that you're exporting. So once I have my token in a space that I'm happy with, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to go to Save As, and I'm going to call this hobgoblin.png. Hit Save. Uh, so you'll see Save As type. Uh, so in this version of Token Tool, it's, it's always going to default to WebP image. Don't worry about that. As long as you name it, whatever your file name, .png, for example, it will export a ping. I think this might just be, uh, so that, like, you can't change this. So that might be uh, something that the RP Tools team is going to fix in a near future release. We'll see. I don't know. But for now, just remember, if you type in the file name, .png, you're good to go. So I'll hit save. So I've just exported my hobgoblin ping image for the token. So you can do this for any any image that you find on the web. I basically copy it, paste it, create, an, create a uh, token out of. Uh, one of the things that you could do down here, um, so this is currently set to a 256 by 256 image. That's a little bit larger than I usually use. Usually I scroll my, or I uh, create my images at about 150, just to save a little bit of file size when I'm, uh, when I'm setting up my virtual tabletops, just to make sure that uh, we don't have too many images uh, on the, the game table and potentially bogging down if somebody has a, a slow network connection or anything like that. So, so I'm gonna resize this to 150 by 150 and hit save as, and I'll call this one Hobgoblin 150 by 150, just to differentiate between uh, my previous exports and this export. All right, now, the latest version of Token Tool offers the ability to, to open up PDF files within the Token Tool application itself. So I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna go to Open PDF, and I'm gonna open up a PDF that I downloaded from Paizo's website. Let me just hop over to, uh, to Paizo's website just to plug this real quick. Uh, so I play a lot of Pathfinder, and um, this is a module that was released, I think, in 2000, yeah, 2007 uh, during Free RPG Day. Uh, it's called Hollow's Last Hope. It was originally, I think, a 3.5 D&D module that was released. This is easy to convert to uh, Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2nd Edition, and Dungeons & Dragons 5.0, uh, depending on what uh, game system you're using. You could even uh, you know, basically just use the, the fluff from this to, create, to, uh, to play whatever game system you're playing. Uh, so I already have this downloaded. This is, again, it's a free module. You can go to paizo.com and download that. Uh, so let's head back over to here. So here is the PDF that I'm opening. I'll hit open. And here is our PDF open. So I'm going to go to, I know on page five, there's an NPC uh, character portrait that I'm going to import uh, into my token tool. And you see when I click on the image over here, it, it updates the uh, portrait view and imports this NPC portrait. Uh, since I don't want my NPC to be in the forest, I'm going to go over to my background options, remove the background image, and once I have removed that background, uh, we should be good to go. Might zoom out just a little bit. So there we go. You can see this creates a nice little uh, NPC portrait. And this NPC is named Laurel. So we're going to save this as, oh, actually, one more thing that I want to do for my workflow. Again, I tend to use a different color for uh, enemy uh, portraits and for ally portraits. So I'm going to put, we'll put a blue frame around Laurel because she's an NPC who is currently friendly uh, with my player characters. And I'll go to save as, and I'll name this laurel.png, hit save. 
Now token tool outputs my, my ping. And then I'm gonna scroll through here. And because I've already done this a few times, I know that on page 17, here is a creature uh, image that I wanna import. So I'll click on here, scroll this out and change my frame to a red frame because this is an enemy uh, token. Now, one more thing that is kind of fun with these, uh, with portrait options, I have the ability to reset the opacity. So if I wanted this to be a ghost or something like that, maybe I would put an image in the background and then have the ghost uh, transposed over that, denoting that it's an incorporeal uh, creature. I can also use this glow feature. And for this wolf, uh, one of the things that I was playing around with earlier, uh, you see that I have uh, the wolf is a uh, sort of gray and black image. If I turn glow all the way up, now it becomes a sort of white and gray image. So maybe I would output this to be a winter wolf or denote, you know, by changing the, uh, the glow uh, to change the appearance slightly of this uh, wolf. Maybe I would output this as uh, the boss of a group of wolves or something like that. Uh, since this is just going to be a wolf uh, in the campaign that I'm setting up, I'll turn the glow back just to its default. Hit over here, save as, and we'll call this wolf.png and hit save. So now I've created three ping files uh, that I'll be using uh, to set up the campaign that I'm going to run. And I will head back over to my browser where I have my roll, roll 20 interface called up. I'm going to say upload and find my tokens that I've created. Shrink my window down a little bit here so that I can grab my tokens and drag them in here to roll 20. And these should be uploading. Here we go. Close that. And I'll drag these uh, tokens onto my screen so that you can see what they look like here. So as I said, I usually use a 150 by 150 token uh, image size. That's the resolution that I use. And that allows me to zoom up uh, even at 180, these aren't getting too terribly pixelated. Let's see, if I go to 200, a little bit of pixelation maybe uh, in a few spots, but still pretty good. So it allows characters to zoom in pretty far uh, on these tokens that we've created. Now, if I had a large wolf, I suppose this isn't too bad at this point. This character, uh, if I needed to size this up to a larger size on my game screen, you know, this this could still could still work pretty well. There's not too bad of uh, pixelation on here. But if I knew that I was creating a giant or something like that, then what I would do is over here in the overlay option, I would size this up to maybe 300, something like that, and then scale up my image so that when I output my token, it's at a larger size and on screen, uh, it will still be very good resolution uh, even when I size it up. Uh, within my, my gaming table. Uh, so that should hold true for not just Roll20, but Foundry or Fantasy Grounds or any virtual tabletop that you're playing on. Okay, there is my quick review of Token Tool 2.2. Hopefully this was enough for you to see why I think this is an efficient tool to create tokens out of web-based content or uh, pull images from a PDF file that I own. Uh, to set up the campaigns that I'm running in virtual tabletop games. If you have a different tool that you're using and find it to be helpful, drop a note in the comment section below. Let me know about it. I'd love to try it and see if it's something that could speed up some of my game prep. And if you like what you see here, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button, and I'll have more tabletop content coming to you very shortly. Until we meet again, good luck, and may you roll many crits.